welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 300th episode of Reaction and Review. My God, guys, 300 episodes. I, w I guys, was really stunned when my series hit 50 episodes, but now that I've hit 300 episodes, that is a fucking achievement. And that is an awesome achievement. You have no idea how happy I am to be filming episode 300 right now. And I gave you guys the chance to vote for episode 3 300. And out of the four and out of the four candidates I, I gave you, you guys picked picked one. You gave it 391 votes. It's a Japanese horror movie from 2009. The movie is grotesque. I'm gonna tell you guys. I just told you everything I know about this movie. I know that it's a Japanese film, I know that it's a gore film, I know that it's called Grotesque, and I know it came out in 2009. That's it. That's all I know. I have no clue about any details about about this movie. I haven't. I really haven't bothered to read the back at all. I'm going into this thing completely blind. And you know what? I, the only, now, now, the only thing I want is I want it to be at least halfway decent, especially after having to suffer through having to suffer through Alone in the Dark for episode 299. Frankly, almost anything would be a vast improvement over that. I'm hoping for this to be said vast, said vast improvement. I'm hoping for it, for, for it to be decent. But the only way I'm going to find out if it is decent is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Grotesque. Wow, guys, the movie has the movie has just started and one of and one of our two victims has already been tortured to the point of pissing himself. I have a, I really have a feeling that this thing is going to escalate quickly and it's going to get incredibly nasty. It should prove to be kind of interesting. Okay, guys, this is this is getting incredibly creepy. Not honestly because of the torture, and not because of the little bit of gore we've seen, but just simply because the guy who's torturing this couple is so fucking calm. He's just so calm and mellow about about everything, and it's incredibly unfucking settling. I just kind of want to let you guys know. You know, guys, I honestly don't know which is sicker. The very fact that this guy has decided to torture these two people, or the fact that he immediately dresses and, you know, he immediately dresses and bandages every single wound he makes on these people so that way they live longer, or the fact that he just made a necklace out of, out of the guy's fingers and is now wrapping it around the woman's neck. God, that is fucked in the head. Okay, that there was about enough to make me fucking want to hurl. Oh god, now he's gonna cut off her other fucking nipple. God, what the fuck is wrong with this goddamn movie? Oh god, just seeing that was sick. You know, guys, I genuinely have no idea which one would be worse. Being horribly tortured by an evil piece piece of shit, or having that same evil e evil piece of shit medically treat you and also and also give you rehab care afterwards. I really don't know which one would be worse. It really just seems fucked up both ways to me, you know what I mean? Okay, you know, uh, you know, now uh, out of all of the classical music music pieces, I could picture torturing somebody to. This piece, pomp and circumstance, is not the classical piece I would use. It seems so weird and out of place. But then again, that kind of sort of sums up using using classical music while torturing anybody. But this piece just seems incredibly odd odd to me, and I don't know why. Well, guys, that was grotesque, and, uh, grotesque is probably the best word you could use to actually describe this movie. Let me shut that off. Wow, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, oh, God, now I have to try to talk about this goddamn movie. Um, well, when in doubt, let's, you know, let's just sort of start with writing. Um, 
the writing here, I really thought at first, guys, that the writing was going to suck. I really did. I uh, went into this, and like within the first like 10, 10 minutes or so, I really thought that we weren't going to have a whole lot of whole lot of story here. I really thought it was going to be another bland, whatever, torture, like, uh, torture film where our victims are, are tortured, but there is, but, but there is no real structure or substance to any of it. And as the film went on, uh, it slowly started getting deeper and better as the film went on. So, uh, you know, writing here uh, really, really does pick up. I mean, it starts off kind of weak, and then it just rockets into some of the best writing I've seen in a uh, gore film, a torture film, any of that in a long, long time. Um, really, guys, if now if I had to put, like, a summary on this thing, imagine Saw... If Jigsaw were uh, were a lot more hands on with his uh, with his uh, torturing, and what and what and what I mean by by that is, throughout most of the film, you kind of sort of get get the feeling that that this guy is torturing these these two in order to test their love for each other because he saw them as a couple. He didn't know that they were that they had technically been dating for all of like twenty minutes when he when he captured them. But still, he basically was sort of testing their bond of love. And um and where and where in the Saw films that honestly would have this gigantic rusty trap, he basically just sits there and tortures and tortures the both of them and just try and just tries to see if one of them is willing to die for the other, and, and that is kind of sort of how it starts off. And then you find out that there's that there's that there's far far more to it, and that he and that he isn't just torturing them for giggles and he isn't torturing them for the sake of testing out their, you know, like, love. No, 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 he is, he is doing it because he needs, because he, because he needs to feel the rush of the will to live, uh, or something, or something, or just sort of something along those lines. So he's torturing them in hopes of basically watching them fight and struggle to live, uh, and then he promises to set, you know, them free, which then winds up being a total lie that really isn't a huge spoiler but anyway uh <laughs> the movie is written very very well we have now we have a now we have a we, we we have a cast of three uh and the cast really isn't the deepest in in the in in the world these uh you know characters are not that like ultra ultra mega deep but they but they definitely work in fact, um, in the last, like, ten minutes, our fucking torturer is given tons and tons of character depth as one of his victims essentially gives him a very long-winded speech about why he does these these horrible things and why he sucks because he does it. Um, and, it seem, and it seems that all of it hits very, very close close to home because then because then he goes nutso and just you know he he basically just goes nutso on the victim um the story here is definitely going to keep you going the plus side to it guys is that is that the movie's only an hour and 15 minutes the, hour, the movie's only an hour and 15 minutes long which is good when you are doing a torture film of this nature because you seriously do not want to drag it out. You really do not want this thing just, you know, dragging and going on. You want it to be short, sweet, and to and to the point. So so that way so that way the viewers are stunned, the viewers are shocked, but the viewers are never bored. And that happens here. The writing the writing and the pacing are that tight. Uh, the acting here is also really good. However, though, that is partially because we have one guy torturing two other people, and the other and the, and the, and the other two people really have very, very, very little in terms of dialogue. Most of it is just that they have to look scared, frightened, and fearing, and fearing for their fucking lives. That's that is it, and they hit that perfectly. And our uh, and our and our uh, villain, our uh, our fucking like dungeon fucking master, let's call him. He plays up everything incredibly, incredibly calm, and it gets really unnerving as the movie goes. Um, so yeah, uh, acting here is really good for. 
for for what is given and because this film is not a very character heavy film as in you know it uh, as in you know we don't have to know about how how deep these characters are they they basically just have to be there and two of them are basically there to be chopped up and tortured so really guys writing here is good there and the acting also is perfect for what is here special effects almost all of the special effects here are really good except at the very end we suddenly see CG blood and CG blood I'm gonna tell you guys right now that has never looked looked good it has never it has never looked right almost every almost every instance of awesome blood use in film has always been practical blood because it just looks more looks more realistic the very now, now the very fact that at the end of the film when uh, when when we basically see if if our two victims are, are going to get out of here alive, uh, in a film that has used nothing but practical blood for the entire run, to all of a sudden drown us in CG blood feels so, it feels so out of place and the blood looks so cheap. And really, it kind of sort of puts a small hindrance on a film that has fantastic special effects for the rest of the movie. Um... Now, mind you now, there actually is a little bit of extra stuff in there, which is also CG and looks really good. It's just that the blood looks off. The blood looks way off when when, when compared to the copious amounts of it, or, 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 or rather the copious amounts of practical blood we saw up until that, and up until that point. It just looks way off, and it looks way, way out of place. Um... So we do have that as a small negative, but everything else, guys, in terms of blood and in terms of the severed penis and the severed nipples and the punctured fucking ball sack, just, ugh, all of that looks incredibly realistic, and when you see these things happen, it is going to make you gag. It is going to make you feel fucking queasy. It is going to make you hope and pray that you have a garbage can next to you. There is that slight chance you may very well hurl. Now, I thankfully didn't, and that's probably for and that and that is probably because uh, it would really take a lot for 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 me to throw up whilst watching a movie. This thing here is certainly sick. It is gross. It is nasty, uh, and. And if you, and if you, unlike, uh, and, and if you un fucking like me, are uh, rather, you know, que or you're rather, like, squeamish towards blood and gore, this thing, now, this thing here is going to have you hurling in almost record time. Um, however, for, for people who are used to gore films and you are used to seeing severed fucking, like, body, severed, you know, like, body parts and what have you, then all of this is going to look really good, and a whole lot of it is still, is still, is still going to make you, you know, it, it is still going to make you wince, and it's still, and it's still going to make you feel, you know, sick, and it, and it is going to make you feel fucking sick on a, on a level that most movies don't. This thing, guys has some of the best gore effects I have ever seen. This thing was awesome there. Um, music. Uh, well, our fucking, our fucking, you know, like, villain, he loves classical, classical music, and all of it works. All of it sounds really good. And it also especially helps with his rather calm, calm uh, style as he talks to and tortures his, his two victims. The only piece that just seems to stand out is right towards the end when he pops in a tape and all of a sudden we hear we hear we hear fucking pomp and circumstance playing it really just doesn't feel you know right because because everything else has been really calm music it's been kind of you know it's been really it's been really like mellow mellow stuff and and pomp and circumstance is just is just this really really like blustery louder piece of classical music. It isn't fucking darker. It just sounds it just sounds far and away different when compared to every other piece of piece of music that is used in the film. Mind you though, now that now mind you now that actually is still a good a good song, and uh, and and as and as the scene you know goes on, you it really really does begin to work. It's just that it is just that when you first hear it, it just sounds a little bit off. It is just it is probably just going to throw you off slightly. 
uh, well, at least it did for me. Uh, music here was really, really decent. The sound mix here is really good. Camera work. I know a lot of people are not fans of shaky cam, and they usually like it if you get if you give if you give fair fair warning if there's a whole lot of shaky cam in your movie. Uh, warning: This thing has a shitload of shaky cam. You have been warned. Um, and I do know that that oftentimes will make people feel, you know, sick and kind of sort of nauseous. So if you have a problem with shaky cam in, in your movies, you're not going to like this thing. Because the, because the camera is constantly, you know, like, is just constantly like jittering and moving around. Because, and it's doing it mainly, mainly be, may, and it's doing it because they, they were shooting for a grittier look to all of this. And to, ha and to have the whole thing shot with, and to have the whole thing shot with handheld cameras, it really, really does add that little bit of extra grittiness to the overall feel, feel of the film. Uh, the lighting also helps add a really nice touch of grittiness, as do the sets, because because this guy is torturing them in a basement that just looks dingy and grimy and disgusting, and it really does help with the tone. And when he is treating their wounds and promising to let them to let them go about you know like about you know like halfway through, uh, all of a sudden they they are in this ultra clean, sterile, white fucking room. Uh, which is which is just a which is such a huge like tonal tonal shift that it definitely works and it kind of sort of shows that they are now suddenly safe. Uh, it really does work, guys. And this and this and this movie has taken has taken uh, has taken shifting shifting tones and turned it into almost an art form with just how well they you know like did it here. So when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Grotesque? Uh, yeah, I totally can. Now, I, I do have to warn, because I, because I do know that there are some people out there who cannot stand sub, who cannot stand, like, subtitles. This movie does not have an English dub, so, honestly, for some, that is probably going to be a huge deal, a huge deal, you know, breaker. It certainly wasn't for me, but I do know that, that there are some people who will only watch dubbed versions of, of movies. And if that is going to be a problem, then sadly, uh, you're probably going to want to avoid this. Same thing also if, if, if you are not a fan of gore, if you are not a fan of tons and tons of blood, uh, if you are not a fan of shaky cam. All of that is probably going to hinder you slightly if you do decide to attempt to watch this. Um, however, if, however, if none of that is... A problem for you. You really should check out this uh, movie, and and if you can find it on Blu-ray, awesome. If you can find it on DVD, cool. If you can find it on Netflix, I'm not sure if it's on Netflix or not. I would totally recommend checking, checking, checking out this movie. And guys, the worst that will happen to you. The movie's only an hour and fifteen minutes. The movie, the movie is certainly short, so it honestly is not going to take you long to just sit down and watch it. I highly recommend you guys check it out. As long as once more you're um, just basically, you know, like so long as you don't have a problem with subtitles, gore, or shaky cam, then you know by all means check it out now. Episode 300, Grotesque, came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in is Kevin from YouTube. And you can and you guys can check out his channel by heading over to youtube.com slash user slash KM Brooks Bank. Uh, I, yes, I've got it written down. Once more, that's youtube.com slash user slash KM Brooks, uh, Brooks Bank. And uh, Kevin, thank you. I was really curious about this movie. And I kind of and I kind of had my doubts going in. Uh, within the first like couple of minutes, I kind of sort of had my doubts, and the movie proved me wrong. This thing was great. Awesome? Maybe not awesome, but definitely worth checking out, and this thing is going to have a happy spot in my, in my Blu-ray collection. I can totally see myself watching this, this movie again. Once more, Kevin, I thank you, and uh, wow, guys. Oh, 300 episodes of this, guys. I've watched 300 movies. Well, uh, almost 300 movies. Like, 300 movies and the fucking Boku no Pico OVA thing and the, the Sonic OVA. Fuck it. 300 episodes. That really is all that matters, guys. 300 episodes of me sitting here and watching movies and OVAs and, like, lots of other random shit. 
and it's been an awesome 300 episodes, and God fucking willing, I will be here for another 300 episodes. And I want to thank every single one of one of you for for you know watching this. Had now this has been an awesome, awesome experience. I love I love working on this series, and I love entertaining you guys. Once more, I thank everybody for 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 sticking here with me. Even honestly, guys, if this here was your first time watching me, I thank you. You all rock. Now, guys, with that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.